What is the role of yeast in beer production? Beer is made by fermenting water, malt, sugar, hops, yeast, species Saccharomyces spp. Salt, and citric acid. Each ingredient has a specific role in the creation of beer. Malt is produced from a grain usually barley that has sprouted. Been dried in a kill, and ground into a powder. Malt gives beer its characteristic body and flavor. Hops is made from the fruit that grows on the herb Humulus lupulus, a member of the mulberry family. The fruit is picked when ripe and is then dried, this ingredient gives beer a slightly bitter flavor. Yeast is used for the fermentation process. Making beer is a complex process. One method Begins by mixing and mashing malted barley with a cooked cereal grain such as corn. This mixture, called wort, is filtered before hops is added to it. The wort is then heated until it is completely soluble. The hops is removed, and after the mixture has cooled, yeast is added. The beer ferments for 8 to 11 days at temperatures that range between 50 degrees and 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees and 21 degrees Celsius. The beer is then stored and kept at a state that is close to freezing. During the next few months the liquid takes on its final character before carbon dioxide is added for effervescence. The beer is then refrigerated, filtered, and pasteurized in preparation for bottling or canning. What is the role of yeast in beer production? Beer is made by fermenting water, malt, sugar, hops, yeast, species Saccharomyces spp. Salt, and citric acid. Each ingredient has a specific role in the creation of beer. Malt is produced from a grain usually barley that has sprouted. Been dried in a kill, and ground into a powder. Malt gives beer its characteristic body and flavor. Hops is made from the fruit that grows on the herb Humulus lupulus, a member of the mulberry family. The fruit is picked when ripe and is then dried, this ingredient gives beer a slightly bitter flavor. Yeast is used for the fermentation process. Making beer is a complex process. One method Begins by mixing and mashing malted barley with a cooked cereal grain such as corn. This mixture, called wort, is filtered before hops is added to it. The wort is then heated until it is completely soluble. The hops is removed, and after the mixture has cooled, yeast is added. The beer ferments for 8 to 11 days at temperatures that range between 50 degrees and 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees and 21 degrees Celsius. The beer is then stored and kept at a state that is close to freezing. During the next few months the liquid takes on its final character before carbon dioxide is added for effervescence. The beer is then refrigerated, filtered, and pasteurized in preparation for bottling or canning.
Is the same strain of yeast used to make lager and ale beers? Two common strains of yeast are used to ferment beer. Saccharomyces carlsbergensis and Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Saccharomyces carlsbergensis, also known as bottom yeast, sinks to the bottom of the fermentation vat. Strains of bottom yeast ferment best at 42.8 to 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 6 to 12 degrees Celsius, and take 8 to 14 days to produce lager beer. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, also known as top fermenting yeast, is distributed throughout wort and is carried to the top of the fermenting vat by carbon dioxide, CO2. Top fermenting yeast ferments at a higher temperature, 57.2 to 73.4 degrees Fahrenheit 14 to 23 degrees Celsius, over only 5 to 7 days. Top fermenting yeasts produce ales, porter, and stout beers. Is the same strain of yeast used to make lager and ale beers? Two common strains of yeast are used to ferment beer. Saccharomyces carlsbergensis and Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Saccharomyces carlsbergensis, also known as bottom yeast, sinks to the bottom of the fermentation vat. Strains of bottom yeast ferment best at 42.8 to 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 6 to 12 degrees Celsius, and take 8 to 14 days to produce lager beer. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, also known as top fermenting yeast, is distributed throughout wort and is carried to the top of the fermenting vat by carbon dioxide, CO2. Top fermenting yeast ferments at a higher temperature, 57.2 to 73.4 degrees Fahrenheit 14 to 23 degrees Celsius, over only 5 to 7 days. Top fermenting yeasts produce ales, porter, and stout beers. Why is the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae important in genetic research? Biologists have studied Saccharomyces cerevisiae, a yeast used by bakers and brewers. For many decades because it offers valuable clues to aid in the understanding of how more advanced organisms work. For example, humans and yeast share a number of similarities in their genetic makeup. The DNA present in certain regions of yeast contain stretches of DNA subunits that are nearly identical to those in human DNA. These similarities indicate that humans and yeast both have similar genes that play a critical role in cell function. In 1996 an international consortium of scientists from the United States, Canada, Europe, and Japan completed the genome sequence, all 12,057,500 subunits contained in the nuclear DNA of S. cerevisiae. It is the first eukaryotic organism to be completely sequenced. With their rapid generation time, yeasts continue to be the organism of choice. To provide significant insights into the functioning of eukaryotic systems.
Why is the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae important in genetic research? Biologists have studied Saccharomyces cerevisiae, a yeast used by bakers and brewers. For many decades because it offers valuable clues to aid in the understanding of how more advanced organisms work. For example, humans and yeast share a number of similarities in their genetic makeup. The DNA present in certain regions of yeast contain stretches of DNA subunits that are nearly identical to those in human DNA. These similarities indicate that humans and yeast both have similar genes that play a critical role in cell function. In 1996 an international consortium of scientists from the United States, Canada, Europe, and Japan completed the genome sequence, all 12,057,500 subunits contained in the nuclear DNA of S. cerevisiae. It is the first eukaryotic organism to be completely sequenced. With their rapid generation time, yeasts continue to be the organism of choice. To provide significant insights into the functioning of eukaryotic systems. What is the economic impact of fungi? Fungi produce gallic acid, which is used in photographic developers, dyes, indelible ink. As well as in the production of artificial flavoring, perfumes, chlorine, alcohols, and several acids. Fungi are also used to make plastics, toothpaste, soap, and in the silvering of mirrors. In Japan almost 500,000 metric tons of fungus fermented soybean curd, tofu and miso, are consumed annually. Different strains of the rust fungus Puccinia graminus cause billions of dollars of damage annually to food and timber crops throughout the world. What is the economic impact of fungi? Fungi produce gallic acid, which is used in photographic developers, dyes, indelible ink. As well as in the production of artificial flavoring, perfumes, chlorine, alcohols, and several acids. Fungi are also used to make plastics, toothpaste, soap, and in the silvering of mirrors. In Japan almost 500,000 metric tons of fungus fermented soybean curd, tofu and miso, are consumed annually. Different strains of the rust fungus Puccinia graminus cause billions of dollars of damage annually to food and timber crops throughout the world. What are some beneficial uses of the sclerotia of the fungus Claviceps purpurea? The sclerotia of Claviceps purpurea are known as the plant disease ergot. Ergot is used pharmaceutically to produce drugs used to induce labor in pregnant women and to control bleeding after childbirth. Ergotamine, an ergot alkaloid, is used to treat migraine headaches.
What are some beneficial uses of the sclerotia of the fungus Claviceps purpurea? The sclerotia of Claviceps purpurea are known as the plant disease ergot. Ergot is used pharmaceutically to produce drugs used to induce labor in pregnant women and to control bleeding after childbirth. Ergotamine, an ergot alkaloid, is used to treat migraine headaches. How do antibiotics differ from antibacterials? Antibiotics and antibacterials both interfere with the growth and reproduction of bacteria. Antibiotics are medications for humans and animals. Antibacterials, found in soaps, detergents, health and skin care products, and household cleaners are used to disinfect surfaces and eliminate potentially harmful bacteria. How does the use of antibiotics in animal feed promote animal growth? Farmers introduced the use of antibiotics to animal feed more than 40 years ago. The main reason for antibiotic use was, and continues to be, to keep the animals healthy. Animals are often kept closely together in pens. A condition that promotes the spread of bacterial infections. The use of antibiotics inhibited the incidence and spread of infection among livestock. An unplanned side effect of this treatment was accelerated animal growth. Scientists believe antibiotics suppress the intestinal bacteria Clostridium perfringens, which produces toxins that may retard animal growth. After this discovery, Farmers began to give their animals antibiotics to promote weight gain as well as to treat infection. How are mushrooms grown commercially? The most common, commercially grown mushroom is the white button mushroom, Agaricus bisporus. Mushroom farms consist of special planting beds in buildings. With temperature and humidity conditions that are controlled. The beds contain soil mixed with a material that is rich in organic matter. The beds are inoculated with mushroom spawn a pure culture of the mushroom fungus grown in large bottles on an organic rich medium. The mycelium grows and spreads throughout the soil mixture for several weeks. Mushroom formation is induced by adding a layer of casing soil to the surface of the bed. Mushrooms appear on the surface of the bed through a process known as a flash. Mushrooms must be collected immediately after flashing, while they are still fresh. What is mycorrhiza? Symbiosis is the close association of two or more different organisms. One type of symbiosis is known as mutualism. 
defined as an association that is advantageous to both parties. The most common and possibly the most important mutualistic symbiotic relationship in the plant kingdom is known as mycorrhiza. The word mycorrhiza is derived from the Greek words mykes, meaning fungus, and rhiza, meaning root. Mycorrhiza is a spechalized, symbiotic association between the roots of plants and fungi that occurs in the vast majority of plants both wild and cultivated. In a mycorrhizal relationship, the fungi assist their host plants by increasing the plant's ability to capture water and essential elements such as phosphorus, zinc, manganese, and copper from the soil, and transfer them into the plant's roots. The fungi also provide protection against attack by pathogens and nematodes. In return for these benefits, the fungal partner receives carbohydrates, amino acids, and vitamins essential for its growth directly from the host plant. Basidiomycetes, mushrooms, bracket fungi, etc., are the fungal. Mycorrhizal partners of trees and other woody plants. Zygomycetes, molds, etc., are the fungal partners of non woody plants. It has been estimated that mycorrhizal fungi amount to 15% of the total weight of the world's plant roots. Which antibiotic is considered the last resort for treating? Resistant strains of staphylococcal and enterococcal infections? Staphylococcal and enterococcal infections often have to be treated with vancomycin. As this antibiotic is lethal to these resistant strains of bacteria often found in hospitals. Until recently, vancomycin was effective against these resistant pathogens. However, in the late 1980s a vancomycin resistant strain of Enterococcus developed and began posing a threat to hospital patients and the healthcare community. Researchers continue to chemically alter the vancomycin molecule to help it remain effective as the antibiotic of last resort. Is there a link between antibiotic use in animal feed and the increase in bacterial infections becoming resistant to antibiotics in humans? Scientists have discovered a link between agricultural use of antibiotics, particularly in animal feed and the increase of foodborne infections in humans who consume products derived from these animals. Resistant bacteria present in animals can survive the slaughtering and meat packaging process. Undercooked meat will harbor these bacteria and when eaten can cause illness in humans. To further complicate the situation, the antibiotics used to treat humans made ill by Infections may be similar to those used routinely in animals, rendering them less effective. Is the same strain of yeast used to make lager and ale beers?
Two common strains of yeast are used to ferment beer. Saccharomyces carlsbergensis and Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Saccharomyces carlsbergensis, also known as bottom yeast, sinks to the bottom of the fermentation vat. Strains of bottom yeast ferment best at 42.8 to 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 6 to 12 degrees Celsius, and take 8 to 14 days to produce lager beer. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, also known as top fermenting yeast, is distributed throughout wort and is carried to the top of the fermenting vat by carbon dioxide, CO2. Top fermenting yeast ferments at a higher temperature, 57.2 to 73.4 degrees Fahrenheit 14 to 23 degrees Celsius, over only 5 to 7 days. Top fermenting yeasts produce ales, porter, and stout beers. What are other examples of lichens assessing pollution? Lichens are used to assess radioactive pollution levels in the vicinity of uranium mines. Environments where nuclear-powered satellites have crashed. Former nuclear bomb testing sites, and power stations that have incurred accidents. Following the Chernobyl nuclear power station disaster in 1986. Arctic lichens as far away as Lapland were tested and showed levels of radioactive dust that were as much as 165 times higher than had been previously recorded. What are the agricultural uses of antibiotics? Antibiotics are sprayed onto fruit trees and other food-bearing plants to control disease. In addition, antibiotics are added to feed stocks to prevent disease and improve the growth rate among food-producing animals. What is the difference between active dry yeast and compressed fresh yeast? Both active dry yeast and compressed fresh yeast are leavening agents. Active dry yeast comprises tiny, dehydrated granules of yeast. Although the granules are alive, the yeast cells are dormant due to their lack of moisture. Because the cells are dormant, dry yeast has a long shelf life. Active dry yeast becomes active when mixed with warm liquid. Compressed fresh yeast is moist and extremely perishable. It must be stored under refrigeration and used within one to two weeks. How is yeast utilized in food and beverage manufacturing? Yeast is used in winemaking, beer making, and bread making. Yeast converts food into alcohol and carbon dioxide, CO2, during fermentation. In the manufacture of wine and beer, the yeast's manufacture of alcohol is a desired and necessary component of the final product. The CO2 is what gives beer and champagne their bubbly effect. 
Bread making requires the CO2 produced by yeast for certain doughs to rise. Yeasts used in brewing and baking are cultivated strains carefully kept to prevent contamination. What is the life cycle of a typical fungus such as the black bread mold, Rhizopus nigricans? The life cycle of black bread mold, Rhizopus nigricans, is characteristic of the members of the phylum Zygomycota. This fungus has a period of sexual reproduction and a period of asexual reproduction that occurs more frequently. During sexual reproduction, there is a fusion of gametangia. The resulting zygosporangium forms a thick coat that awaits favorable conditions in order to conduct further development. When conditions are favorable, the zygosporangium germinates into a sporangium. During asexual reproduction, spores are produced in the sporangium and then dispersed. What is the ecological role of lichens? Lichens account for approximately 8% of the vegetation covering Earth's surface. In certain environments, such as regions of tundra, they cover vast areas of land. Lichens delay global warming by consuming significant amounts of carbon dioxide. CO2, during photosynthesis. When they cover the ground, they prevent soil from drying out. In desert areas they are able to capture and conserve the moisture present in fog and dew. Lichens release nutrients, such as nitrogen and phosphorus, which are important in regions with nutrient-poor soils as the nutrients aid tree growth. Lichens are also an important food source for many species of animals, including wild turkeys and reindeer of the Arctic tundra. Birds such as the olive-headed weaver of Madagascar and the goldfinch of Europe use lichens to build their nests. What is the economic impact of fungi? Fungi produce gallic acid, which is used in photographic developers, dyes, indelible ink. As well as in the production of artificial flavoring, perfumes, chlorine, alcohols, and several acids. Fungi are also used to make plastics, toothpaste, soap, and in the silvering of mirrors. In Japan almost 500,000 metric tons of fungus fermented soybean curd, tofu and miso, are consumed annually. Different strains of the rust fungus Puccinia graminus cause billions of dollars of damage annually to food and timber crops throughout the world. How did the increased level of radioactive dust, cesium-137, in lichens affect the food chain following the Chernobyl nuclear power station disaster?
Lichens are a primary source of food for reindeer. Reindeer is commonly consumed by humans that live in regions of tundra. When the accumulated level of radioactive dust present in lichens became so high in the reindeer that fed off of them. The reindeer meat became unsuitable for human consumption. Hundreds of tons of reindeer carcasses were disposed of as toxic waste. How many antimicrobial products are available? More than 8,000 antimicrobial products are registered with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. The EPA regulates products that kill microbes on inanimate surfaces. The various products contain more than 300 different active ingredients and are available as sprays. Liquids concentrated powders, and gases. More than 50% of the 8. 000 antimicrobial products are used to control infectious microorganisms in healthcare settings. Do fungi only decompose dead and decaying organic matter? Not only do fungi consume dead and decaying organic matter, but some attack living plants and animals as they serve as a source for necessary organic molecules. Fungi often cause diseases among plants and animals. They are some of the most harmful pests to living plants and are Responsible for billions of dollars in agricultural losses each year. Food products that have been harvested and stored are not immune to fungal decay. Fungi often secrete substances into the foods they attack, making the foods unpalatable or even poisonous. How do yeasts differ from other fungi? Yeasts remain unicellular that is, as single cells throughout their life. Most species reproduce by budding, others through binary fission or spore formation. Each bud that separates from its mother yeast cell can grow into a new yeast cell. Some yeast cells group together to form colonies. What are some beneficial uses of the sclerotia of the fungus Claviceps purpurea? The sclerotia of Claviceps purpurea are known as the plant disease ergot. Ergot is used pharmaceutically to produce drugs used to induce labor in pregnant women and to control bleeding after childbirth. Ergotamine, an ergot alkaloid, is used to treat migraine headaches. How many kinds of mushrooms are edible? Among the basidiomycetes, there are approximately 200 varieties of edible mushrooms and about 70 species of poisonous ones. 
Some edible mushrooms are cultivated commercially, more than 844 million pounds. 382,832 metric tons are produced in the United States each year. Which antibacterial products are the most effective for general use? Non-residue producing agents, such as hydrogen peroxide and bleach, are effective agents for controlling microbes. Several consumer products with residue producing agents have proved to be effective for specific conditions. For example, antibacterial toothpaste helps control periodontal disease. Antibacterial deodorants suppress odor-causing bacteria, and anti-dandruff shampoos help control dandruff. Why is the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae important in genetic research? Biologists have studied Saccharomyces cerevisiae, a yeast used by bakers and brewers, for many decades because it offers valuable clues to aid in the understanding of how more advanced organisms work. For example, humans and yeast share a number of similarities in their genetic makeup. The DNA present in certain regions of yeast contain stretches of DNA subunits that are nearly identical to those in human DNA. These similarities indicate that humans and yeast both have similar genes that play a critical role in cell function. In 1996 an international consortium of scientists from the United States, Canada, Europe, and Japan completed the genome sequence, all 12,057,500 subunits contained in the nuclear DNA of S. cerevisiae. It is the first eukaryotic organism to be completely sequenced. With their rapid generation time, yeasts continue to be the organism of choice. To provide significant insights into the functioning of eukaryotic systems. What purpose do the gills of mushrooms serve? Gills which can be present on the undersurface of a mushroom's cap, serve two main purposes. The first is to maximize the surface area on which spores are produced, allowing a very large number of spores to be produced. The second purpose is to help hold up the cap of the mushroom. Spores are produced in the basidia specialized cells that line the surface of the gills. It has been estimated that a mushroom with a cap that is 3 in 7.5 cm in diameter can produce as many as 40 million spores per hour. What are the differences between non-residue producing antibacterials and residue producing antibacterials? Non-residue producing antibacterials quickly destroy bacteria, rapidly disappear from the surface. They were applied due to evaporation or chemical breakdown, 
and leave no active residue behind. Examples of non-residue producing antibacterials are alcohols, aldehydes. Gaseous substances such as formaldehyde, and halogen releasing compounds such as chlorine and peroxides. In contrast, the disinfecting action of residue producing antibacterials is prolonged. Because they leave long acting residues on the surfaces to which they are applied. Examples of residue producing antibacterials are unallied, such as trichlocarbon. Bisphenols such as triclosan, heavy metal compounds such as silver and mercury. And quaternary ammonium compounds such as benzalkonium chloride. Do bacteriostats, sanitizers, disinfectants, and sterilizers control microorganisms the same way? The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, classifies antimicrobial agents as 118 non-public health products and public health products. Non-public health products are products used to control the growth of algae, odor-causing bacteria, microorganisms infectious only to animals and bacteria that cause spoilage, deterioration, or fouling of materials. Examples of non-public health products are jet fuel, paints, and treatments for both textile and paper products. Public health products control microorganisms infectious to humans in any inanimate environment. Bacteriostats, sanitizers, disinfectants, and sterilizers are all public health products. Sanitizers are used to reduce, not eliminate, microorganisms from inanimate environments. To levels considered safe as determined by public health codes or regulations. Non-food contact sanitizers are used on dishes, utensils and equipment found in dairies and food processing plants. Non-food contact sanitizers include carpet sanitizers, air sanitizers, laundry additives, and in-tank toilet sanitizers. Disinfectants are used on hard, inanimate surfaces and objects in order to destroy or irreversibly inactivate infectious bacteria, but not necessarily their spores. Disinfectants are classified according to whether they will be used in hospital or general environments. Hospital disinfectants are critical to infection control and are used on both medical and dental instruments. Floors, walls, bed linens, and toilet seats. Sterilizers, also called sporicides, destroy all forms of microbial life and their spores. Sterilization is crucial to infection control. And the process is widely used in hospitals as well as on medical instruments and equipment. Examples of sterilizers are autoclaves, dry heat ovens low temperature gas, and liquid chemical sterilants. What is unusual about Ammonita mushrooms? Some of the most poisonous mushrooms belong to the genus Ammonita. Toxic species of this genus have been known by the names Death Angel 
Ammonite of Phalloides, and Destroying Angel, Ammonite of Virosa. Ingestion of a single cap of either of these species can kill a healthy, adult human. Even ingesting a tiny bit of amatoxin the toxin present in species of this. Genus may result in liver ailments that will last the rest of a person's life. What is the role of yeast in beer production? Beer is made by fermenting water, malt, sugar, hops, yeast, species Saccharomyces spp. Salt and citric acid. Each ingredient has a specific role in the creation of beer. Malt is produced from a grain usually barley that has sprouted. Been dried in a kill, and ground into a powder. Malt gives beer its characteristic body and flavor. Hops is made from the fruit that grows on the herb Humulus lupulus, a member of the mulberry family. The fruit is picked when ripe and is then dried. This ingredient gives beer a slightly bitter flavor. Yeast is used for the fermentation process. Making beer is a complex process. One method begins by mixing and mashing malted barley with a cooked cereal grain such as corn. This mixture, called wort, is filtered before hops is added to it. The wort is then heated until it is completely soluble. The hops is removed, and after the mixture has cooled, yeast is added. The beer ferments for 8 to 11 days at temperatures that range between 50 degrees and 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees and 21 degrees Celsius. The beer is then stored and kept at a state that is close to freezing. During the next few months the liquid takes on its final character before carbon dioxide is added for effervescence. The beer is then refrigerated, filtered, and pasteurized in preparation for bottling or canning. What is the dicaryotic phase of fungal life cycles? The dicaryotic phase of the fungal life cycle is unique. During this unusual phase, which is common in many species of fungi, cells contain two distinct nuclei. These two nuclei divide simultaneously as the mycelium grows. Growth continues until fusion occurs during karyogamy. When was a chemical disinfectant first used during a surgical procedure? The use of a chemical disinfectant during a surgical procedure was first documented at the Glasgow Royal Infirmary in March 1865. Before surgery on a patient, Joseph Lister, 1827 to 1912 sprayed the air with a fine mist of the phenol carbolic acid and soaked his surgical instruments in a carbolic acid solution although the patient later died lister continued his experiments in an 1867 article in the lancet it was reported that lister's postoperative surgery mortality rate 
dropped from 45% to 9% after he started to use chemical disinfectants in operative settings. What roles do fungi play in recycling? Fungi play a key role in the recycling of many elements. As the primary decomposers in the biosphere, they break down organic matter, including dead plants and other vegetation. As fungi actively decompose materials, carbon, nitrogen, and the mineral components present in organic compounds are released, these elements can all be recycled. During decomposition, carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere and minerals are returned to the soil. It is estimated that, on average, the top 8 in 20 centimeters of fertile soil contain nearly 5 metric tons of fungi and bacteria per 2.47 acres, 1 hectare. Without fungi acting as decomposers, dead. Organic matter would overpower the world and life on Earth would eventually become impossible. Which is more common endomycorrhiza or ectomycorrhiza? Both endomycorrhiza and ectomycorrhiza have the ability to be mycorrhizal fungi. In endomycorrhiza, the hyphae of the fungus penetrate the outer cells of the plant root and extend into the surrounding soil. In ectomycorrhiza, the hyphae surround but do not penetrate the roots. Endomycorrhiza are much more common than ectomycorrhiza. The fungal component of endomycorrhiza is a zygomycete. While only about 30 species of zygomycetes are known to be involved in endomycorrhizal relationships. The zygomycetes are associated with more than 200,000 species of plants. Basidiomycetes are the most common fungal component of ectomycorrhiza. Although some ascomycetes also form ectomycorrhizal relationships. More species of fungi are involved in ectomycorrhiza, at least 5,000 but most are only associated with a single species of plant. Furthermore, the total number of plants involved in ectomycorrhiza is limited to a few thousand. Which plants most commonly form ectomycorrhizal relationships? The most common plants associated with ectomycorrhiza are trees and shrubs growing in temperate regions. These trees include pines, firs, oaks, beeches, and willows. These plants tend to be more resistant to extreme temperatures, drought, and other harsh environmental conditions. Some ectomycorrhizal fungi may provide protection from acidic precipitation. Are there reliable rules to identify poisonous mushrooms? There are no general reliable rules to identify poisonous mushrooms. Some of 
the edible varieties are quite easily recognized. But some edible varieties closely resemble poisonous mushrooms and can only be distinguished by an expert. The common lore that poisonous mushrooms make silver spoons turn black. While mushrooms that can be peeled are edible, is not true. Some of the deadliest mushrooms, Amanitas, do no turn silver spoons black and can be peeled. The only rule to follow is that one must be able to identify a mushroom with certainty prior to eating it. What factors have contributed to an increase in the number of resistant bacteria? Bacteria mutate in order to adapt to new conditions. A mutation that enables a microbe to survive in the presence of an antibiotic quickly spreads throughout a microbial population. Since bacteria replicate very rapidly, a mutation can swiftly become prevalent. The overuse of antibiotics promotes the emergence of resistant bacteria. Antibiotics may also be prescribed for viral infections that they are not effective against. Furthermore, Patients often fail to follow the directions for taking antibiotics precisely. A prescribed dose of antibiotics should be taken until it is completed. Although an individual can feel better shortly after starting a treatment. Not completing the full course of antibiotics often destroys only the most vulnerable bacteria. Relatively resistant bacteria are able to survive and prosper in a human's body. Because antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria do not respond to standard treatments. Illnesses are able to last for longer periods of time and can result in death. The proliferation of resistant bacteria has made it more difficult to establish effective treatments. In the home setting, does the use of antibacterial soap reduce the risk of infection? Research has uncovered little evidence to support claims that the use of antibacterial soap in a domestic setting reduces the risk of infection or prevents infections. These residue producing antibacterials help control the spread of infection in healthcare settings, such as hospitals and nursing homes. What is the relationship between lichens and air pollution? Lichens are extremely sensitive to pollutants in the atmosphere and can be used as bioindicators of air quality. They absorb minerals from the air, from rainwater, and directly from their substrate. Lichen growth has been used as an indicator of air pollution, especially sulfur dioxide. Pollutants are absorbed by lichens causing the destruction of their chlorophyll, which leads to a decrease in the occurrence of photosynthesis and changes in membrane permeability. Pollutants upset the physiological balance between the fungus and the alga or cyanobacterium, and degradation or destruction of the lichens results. 
lichens are generally absent in and around cities, even though suitable substrates exist. The reason for this is the polluted exhaust from automobiles and industrial activity. They are beginning to disappear from national parks and other relatively remote areas that are becoming increasingly contaminated by industrial pollution. The return of lichens to an area frequently indicates a reduction in air pollution. How does ergot affect humans and cattle? Eating bread and other grain products contaminated with ergot causes the disease called ST. Anthony's fire. Common during the Middle Ages, this disease which causes sensations of intense heat followed by a complete loss of sensation in an infected person's limbs. No longer occurs very frequently due to improved techniques of grain production and milling. Cattle that graze on grains infected with ergot are able to ingest enough to cause death or the spontaneous abortion of fetuses. How does ergot affect humans and cattle? Eating bread and other grain products contaminated with ergot causes the disease called ST. Anthony's fire. Common during the Middle Ages, this disease which causes sensations of intense heat followed by a complete loss of sensation in an infected person's limbs. No longer occurs very frequently due to improved techniques of grain production and milling. Cattle that graze on grains infected with ergot are able to ingest enough to cause death or the spontaneous abortion of fetuses. Which fungus may have played a role in the Salem witch trials? The Salem witch hunts of 1692 may have initially been caused by an infestation of a microbiological poison. The fungus Claviceps purpurea, commonly known as rice mud, produces the poison ergot. When ingested, this poison produces symptoms similar to the ones that presented in the girls who accused others of being witches in Salem. Historians and biologists have reviewed environmental conditions in New England from 1690 to 1692 and have found that conditions were perfect for an occurrence of rice mud overgrowth. The weather conditions during those years were particularly wet and cool. Rye grass had replaced wheat as the principal grain because wheat had become seriously infected with wheat rust during long periods of cold and damp weather. The symptoms of ergot poisoning include convulsions, pinching or biting sensations, stomach ailments, as well as temporary blindness, deafness, and muteness. Which fungus may have played a role in the Salem witch trials? The Salem witch hunts of 1692 may have initially been caused by an infestation of a microbiological poison. 
the fungus Claviceps purpurea, commonly known as rice mud, produces the poison ergot. When ingested, this poison produces symptoms similar to the ones that presented in the girls who accused others of being witches in Salem. Historians and biologists have reviewed environmental conditions in New England from 1690 to 1692 and have found that conditions were perfect for an occurrence of rice mud overgrowth. The weather conditions during those years were particularly wet and cool. Rye grass had replaced wheat as the principal grain because wheat had become Seriously infected with wheat rust during long periods of cold and damp weather. The symptoms of ergot poisoning include convulsions, pinching or biting sensations. Stomach ailments, as well as temporary blindness, deafness and muteness. Which tree that is native to the United States has become extinct due to fungus? The American chestnut, Castinia dentate marsh, was widespread across eastern North America until the early 1900s. This type of chestnut tree made up almost half of the population of hardwood. Forests in central and southern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and southern New England. In its entire range, the species dominated deciduous forests, making up almost one quarter of the trees. The fungus Cryphonectria parasitica, commonly known as chestnut blight, destroyed nearly every specimen of the American chestnut tree. Which tree that is native to the United States has become extinct due to fungus? The American chestnut Castinia dentate marsh was widespread across eastern North America until the early 1900s. This type of chestnut tree made up almost half of the population of hardwood. Forests in central and southern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and southern New England. In its entire range, the species dominated deciduous forests, making up almost one quarter of the trees. The fungus Cryphonectria parasitica, commonly known as chestnut blight, destroyed nearly every specimen of the American chestnut tree. What part of the American chestnut tree does the fungus Cryphonectria parasitica attack? Cryphonectria parasitica, or chestnut blight, attacks a tree's layers of living bark and the adjacent layers of wood. The fungus kills the cells present in the bark that serve the function of carrying the food made in the leaves of a tree to other parts of a tree. As such, nutrients are not able to reach various parts of a tree. The fungus also clogs the cells present in the wood of a tree's trunk that serve to carry water and nutrients through the body of a tree. This fungus leaves the roots of a tree unaffected, allowing a tree to send up new sprouts. However, 
within a number of years, the bark and wood of new sprouts also become affected. What part of the American chestnut tree does the fungus Cryphonectria parasitica attack? Cryphonectria parasitica, or chestnut blight, attacks a tree's layers of living bark and the adjacent layers of wood. The fungus kills the cells present in the bark that serve the function of carrying the food made in the leaves of a tree to other parts of a tree. As such, nutrients are not able to reach various parts of a tree. The fungus also clogs the cells present in the wood of a tree's trunk that serve to carry water and nutrients through the body of a tree. This fungus leaves the roots of a tree unaffected, allowing a tree to send up new sprouts. However, within a number of years, the bark and wood of new sprouts also become affected. What other tree species has been adversely affected by a fungus? Elm trees are susceptible to the fungus Ophiostoma ulmi, which causes Dutch elm disease. The fungus lives in the tubular cells present in the outermost wood of trees. As the cells become plugged, water and nutrients are not able to move. From the roots to the top of a tree, and eventually the tree dies. What other tree species has been adversely affected by a fungus? Elm trees are susceptible to the fungus Ophiostoma ulmi, which causes Dutch elm disease. The fungus lives in the tubular cells present in the outermost wood of trees. As the cells become plugged, water and nutrients are not able to move from the roots to the top of a tree, and eventually the tree dies. When was Dutch elm disease first identified in North America? Dutch elm disease was first identified in 1930 in Cincinnati, Ohio. The source of the fungus was shown to be elm logs imported from Europe. By 1940 the disease had spread to nine states. By 1950 it was found in 17 states and had spread into southern Canada. Today it is found wherever elm trees grow throughout North America. When was Dutch elm disease first identified in North America? Dutch elm disease was first identified in 1930 in Cincinnati, Ohio. The source of the fungus was shown to be elm logs imported from Europe. By 1940 the disease had spread to nine states. By 1950 it was found in 17 states and had spread into southern Canada. Today it is found wherever elm trees grow throughout North America.
How many species of fungi are plant pathogens? More than 8,000 species of fungi cause disease in plants. Most diseases found among both cultivated and wild plants are caused by fungi. Some pathogenic fungi grow and multiply in their host plants. Others grow and multiply on dead organic matter and host plants. Fungi that are pathogenic to plants can occur below the soil surface. At the soil surface, and throughout the body of a plant. Fungi are responsible for leaf spots, blights, rusts, smuts, mildews, cankers, scabs. Fruit rots, galls, wilts, tree diebacks and declines, as well as root, stem, and seed rots. How many species of fungi are plant pathogens? More than 8,000 species of fungi cause disease in plants. Most diseases found among both cultivated and wild plants are caused by fungi. Some pathogenic fungi grow and multiply in their host plants. Others grow and multiply on dead organic matter and host plants. Fungi that are pathogenic to plants can occur below the soil surface. At the soil surface, and throughout the body of a plant. Fungi are responsible for leaf spots, blights, rusts, smuts, mildews, cankers, scabs. Fruit rots, galls, wilts, tree diebacks and declines, as well as root, stem, and seed rots. What are rusts and smuts and what effect do they produce in crops? Rusts and smuts are very small fungi responsible for many serious plant diseases. Cereals and other grains are highly susceptible to attack by rusts and smuts. Many rusts and smuts have complicated life cycles as they are known. To use more than one plant species as a host during their lifetime. For example, Wheat rust spends a portion of its life in barberry plants and a portion in wheat. What are rusts and smuts and what effect do they produce in crops? Rusts and smuts are very small fungi responsible for many serious plant diseases. Cereals and other grains are highly susceptible to attack by rusts and smuts. Many rusts and smuts have complicated life cycles as they are known. To use more than one plant species as a host during their lifetime. For example, Wheat rust spends a portion of its life in barberry plants and a portion in wheat. How are fungi related to soy sauce? Aspergillus tamari and other deuteromycetes are used to Produce soy sauce by slowly fermenting boiled soybeans. 
Soy sauce provides foods with more than its special flavor. The soybeans and fungi give soy sauce amino acids that are vital to human life. Fungi have been used in many cultures to improve the nutrient quality of the diet. How are fungi related to soy sauce? Aspergillus tamari and other deuteromycetes are used to produce soy sauce by slowly fermenting boiled soybeans. Soy sauce provides foods with more than its special flavor. The soybeans and fungi give soy sauce amino acids that are vital to human life. Fungi have been used in many cultures to improve the nutrient quality of the diet. What cheeses are associated with fungi? The unique flavor of cheeses such as Roquefort, Camembert, and Brie is produced by members of the genus Penicillium. Roquefort is often referred to as the king of cheeses. It is one of the oldest and best known cheeses in the world. This blue cheese has been enjoyed since Roman times and was a favorite of Charlemagne. King of the Franks and Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, 742 to 814. Roquefort is made from sheep's milk that has been exposed to the mold. Penicillium Roqueforti and aged for three months or more in the limestone caverns of Mount Comalu. Near the village of Roquefort in southwestern France. This is the only place true Roquefort can be aged. It has a creamy, rich texture and a flavor that is simultaneously pungent, piquant, and salty. It has a creamy white interior marked by blue veins, the cheese is held together with a snowy white rind. True Roquefort is authenticated by the presence of a Red sheep on the emblem present on the cheese's wrapper. Penicillium camemberti gives camembert and brie cheeses their special qualities. Napoleon is said to have christened camembert cheese with its name. Supposedly the name comes from the Norman village where a farmer's wife first served it to Napoleon. This cheese is formed of cow's milk and has a white, downy rind and a smooth, creamy interior. When perfectly ripe and served at room temperature, the cheese should ooze thickly. Although brie is made in many places, brie from the region of the same name. East of Paris is considered one of the world's finest cheeses by connoisseurs. Similar to camembert, it has a white, Surface ripened rind and smooth, buttery interior. What cheeses are associated with fungi? The unique flavor of cheeses such as Roquefort, Camembert and brie is produced by members of the genus Penicillium. Roquefort is often referred to as the king of cheeses. It is one of the oldest and best known cheeses in the world. This blue cheese has been enjoyed since Roman times and was a favorite of Charlemagne. 
King of the Franks and Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, 742-814. Roquefort is made from sheep's milk that has been exposed to the mold. Penicillium roqueforti and aged for three months or more in the limestone caverns of Mount Komalu. Near the village of Roquefort in southwestern France. This is the only place true Roquefort can be aged. It has a creamy, rich texture and a flavor that is simultaneously pungent, piquant, and salty. It has a creamy white interior marked by blue veins, the cheese is held together with a snowy white rind. True Roquefort is authenticated by the presence of a red sheep on the emblem present on the cheese's wrapper. Penicillium camemberti gives camembert and brie cheeses their special qualities. Napoleon is said to have christened camembert cheese with its name. Supposedly the name comes from the Norman village where a farmer's wife first served it to Napoleon. This cheese is formed of cow's milk and has a white, downy rind and a smooth, creamy interior. When perfectly ripe and served at room temperature, the cheese should ooze thickly. Although brie is made in many places, brie from the region of the same name. East of Paris is considered one of the world's finest cheeses by connoisseurs. Similar to camembert, it has a white, surface ripened rind and smooth, buttery interior. <laughs>